Hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. Hope you're all well. Thanks for joining the channel. So today on the bench, I have a JVC JT V71 stereo tuner. This was the complimentary tuner to the uh, JVC amplifier I did a few weeks back. The uh, camera, the S71, I think it was called. And this is the V71. So the owner brought this to me says he did some side-by-side -side comparisons of performance between this tuner and a Kenwood receiver and he said the Kenwood receiver blew it away uh, so he thinks it might have a problem uh, it's quite possible it does but then quite possibly it's just the way it is but uh, we're going to test it out here and see uh, I haven't even turned it on yet so let's do that together turn on the power for the amplifier and turn that down and let's see how this performs. I got a wire connected. We need to plug it in first. First step in trying something out is plugging it in, right? Okay. So it's shut off, drawing zero, zero watts. Let's turn it on. And it goes up to about 8.3. That's FM. It's having some troubles with uh, muting. It sounds like it's muting itself. It's pulling in full, full bars here on the meter, but it is very, it's very flaky, like it doesn't want to, maybe it might be just a dirty tuning capacitor, I haven't seen any stereo yet. does seem to have a problem. It's like it's muting itself. Still not getting stereo. I haven't heard stereo separation yet and I haven't seen the lights, so it's gonna keep going. We've got some high power stations on the top end of the band here. Yeah, it's definitely struggling. bad switches I think it is bad switches the muting is set to off but it seems like we have a problem with the muting switch here okay nighttime low with a 30% chance of flurries not too bad No stereo. No stereo whatsoever. Am. AM's working fine. David Dosua, who is a uh, practicing psychologist. Okay. So I have a good idea of what's going on here. So with some dirty switches is really causing some havoc with the muting circuit. Can't pull in stereo signals for whatever reason. 
and um, probably well I'll reserve my judgments here for now and let's just look at it all right so I got the screws out let's lift the cover off what is that looks like a felt marker it's unusual And here it is. Looks like a it's like a very solid performer. It's got not a, for an AM FM tuner. It's got a lot of circuitry. So we all have power supply on this side here. And this here looks like appears to be output. I wonder if that switches for it doesn't say. Low pass filters. This is just to amplify the signal before it heads out. We have two potentiometers for setting the output level on the, on uh, the outputs here, and then we have a fixed output. Uh, main tuner board here, and this is for AM and FM, I believe, yes. Uh, chips we got for chips. We've got an HA1197 here. We've got an HA1137 here. And an HA1156 here. These are pretty common chips for the for the time. They were used in a lot of different a lot of different tuners. Hitachi chips. They're good, they're good chips if they work. If they don't work, well you replace them and yeah, so we got three fuses for a tuner. Interesting. I don't know why we need so much power for a tuner. It was only drawing 8 watts. So I'll go through. Basically I want to make sure that the power supply is working properly in this thing. And uh, we'll figure out that switch is probably dirty. It needs a good clean. And then we'll see how that brings it back. But that still doesn't explain why we have no stereo separation. No, no uh, demultiplexing. So concentrate on making sure that this is all good first. I'll go through and check caps and replace any that need to be replaced. Uh, same goes for the tuners, tuner and uh, the output boards. We'll go through and we'll check caps, make sure they're all 100% and then we'll clean that switch. And then we'll focus our attention on to why we don't have FM, FM stereo. And then we'll uh, maybe run through an alignment for this thing. Maybe we can bring it back, we'll see. Just a quick look at the back. We have our antenna inputs. We have a 75 ohm unbalanced and that's for for coax and then we have a 300 ohm balanced and AM antenna. We've got an input for an AM antenna long wire. Have an FM detector output so if you don't like the detector in this one you can get another one and uh, plug it in. Uh, two sets of outputs. One's fixed, one's variable. And then these are the two pots for the variable outputs. And we have our manufacturer badge and we have a voltage tap setting here. I just want to check and make sure it's correct because sometimes these are on the wrong setting. Let's pull this off. Have a look. And yes, it's set for 120 volts. If it was set for 110 volts, that would be powering this, uh, this tuner with an over voltage condition, which would damage a lot of stuff inside. So we want to make sure it's set for 120 for North America, not 110. Okay, so I lifted the power board here and had a look. First thing I saw, this transistor, this crack solders. Okay, that's one thing. That, that is an issue because it is definitely broken this connection there and then I pulled the first two capacitors I pulled out they test uh, they test uh, pretty tired they have uh, double the ESR what the what they should be so I think for the amount of capacitors that's in this tuner I might as well just go through and do a blanket replace because uh, these are pretty tired I don't know what year these are I think they're like 1978 or something 
um, if I'm not mistaken. I thought I saw a date code here somewhere. 77, maybe that's what it is. So, Elna caps, they test fine on uh, microfarads, but they are high on ESR. And uh, yeah, don't worry about that, it does circuit glue. That's the same circuit glue I saw in the amplifier. It was slathered everywhere and it pretty much uh, turned to dust. I don't think these are leaking. I don't see any corrosion on them, so. But they are gonna get changed. And for the, like I said, the, the small amount of caps that are in here, it's not really a big cost for the, for the customer, for the client. It's a few dollars in capacitors. So we'll go ahead and do that. I also found a burned out uh, stereo lamp pulled it out had a look at it and then it, the filament's definitely gone so I'll have to replace that as well but I still don't think we were getting stereo separation I didn't hear it so uh, we'll replace that replace the caps fix up this dodgy solder joint and then I'll check everything else here and uh, replace this lamp we have to remove these two switches uh, they're on a separate board by themselves we got uh, the modes the the mode switch and the two uh, the two switches here they're gonna come out and get cleaned and then uh, yeah it's, um, I think next step would be putting some lamps in this thing he wanted some um, LEDs put in to brighten it up a bit and I can see why they, the lamps are pretty dim there is a lamp here above the pointer with a green filter on it and we'll replace that with a green LED to give it more brightness and then there's a lamp here behind the meters that was pretty dim as well and uh, we'll, we'll upgrade that one as well all right so I pulled out these switches two of them just to clean them I, I don't have much faith in spraying stuff in and having it expecting it to work so I'm gonna go full out on this oops we are gonna open this so they got uh, four tangs right here and here here and here we're gonna we're going to uh, Carefully nudge these back in, away from the... Oh, they're holding the plastic in. You just give it a very careful squeeze. Don't want to go too far because they'll snap off. And just give it a, a nudge. A little more on this one. There we go. It looks like they put glue on them too. Okay, this one's bent in a little bit. Bent it out. All right, so those four are released. What we want to do is remove this gray part and leave the black part behind. So I'm just going to get in here and start prying it up. And um, you'll know right away if you don't have your crimps or your uh, if your crimps aren't released enough. It's coming right out. Okay. And there it is. So it's pretty basic. This is just a lever and it converts your toggle motion into a, a linear motion back here with this. That sits in that thing and then so on and so on. So here we got um, four switches. What I'm going to do right now is just remove these sproingy things because they will fly across the room. There's a lot of green in here like it's corrosion. There shouldn't be any corrosion in this. But I can see green which is never a good sign with switches. There's green all over everything. So we're going to flood this Let's see here, I'll get a rig. Let's flush this out. 
just going to use this stuff is uh, what is this called again tetrachloroethylene right there oops and some q-tips Yeah, look at the filth in there. It's green. This is part of the big reason why it wasn't working properly. Look at the filth. Unbelievable. And just spraying stuff in isn't going to remove that, that filth. It's going to just redistribute it inside there and move it around. And then it's going to, when the solvents evaporate, it's just going to be planted there. So let's just do this again. Problem is I can't get my Q-tip in between here. I wonder if I can flush this out. Lots of trash in there too. I think the dirt's getting in from the, uh, the front panel. Okay, let's clean these. green all over him. Okay. All right, so let's put it back together. I'll have this green stuff on here. gonna clean these better because there's green stuff on them. I'm just gonna get a piece of card card stock. Hang on. Okay, this will work good. It's just a piece of paper folded in half. Put these on here. Be very careful not to bend these. They're very thin. these down look at this blue green stuff coming out I don't know what that is some dirt off of them. Alright, let's put this back together. they do this at the factory.
Main thing is you don't want to bend these. Because you'll have a hell of a time trying to straighten it out if you do. There we go. And I'll line them up. And I'll just put them all in the center. All right, so this piece goes here. Now we bring in the deoxid. Small drop in every. Wow, it's really coming out. Okay. Put this back on, and we're just going to work it a bit. going to give it a little bit of lubrication down in the bottom there all right That should work perfectly. So you're going to want to line up this little nub here with this hole. Actually, while I'm here, let's clean out this. old grease and give it new grease okay goes together like that so that's lined up okay You should see it, see it in the window moving back and forth, and it is, it's engaged. Okay, so I'll just squeeze it and spread these little tangs out again. Use a screwdriver. Just spread it ever so slightly, and it will hold it in. It's a pretty tight tolerance. Okay, I'll do the other one and then we'll reinstall these and then we're done for the switches. Okay, so I've been busy doing recapping. So everything's been recapped. Power supply, the output board and the tuner board itself have all had new caps installed. 
Okay, I didn't pull out any defective caps, but a lot of them were retired and uh, they needed to go. They're, they're old enough. They deserve, deserve a good retirement. Now, a couple other things I noticed here. We've got three transistors uh, here. Which one? This, these three here. You can't see it because you're out of frame. These three here. We've got one, two, and three. These are two SC458s and they are problematic. So I'm going to replace these with two S or KSC1845s. And uh, they do, um, they're not in the audio path, but they are doing a duty of um, switching the muting on and off. So that's what kind of suspect one of these maybe are bad because the muting was freaking out so badly when I first tested it. So we're going to replace these three and uh, get those out of the way. Now on to lamp, uh, lamps and lighting. So we have two lamps here that are burned out. One is a pilot light for the power and the other is a stereo lamp. Okay. They look identical to me. Uh, these are supposed to be six volt lamps, I believe. And these two here, this is the meter lamp and it's got a blue condom on it or blue uh, paint on it. And there's another blue one up here. I can pull it out. This one's got clear. There we go. It's clear. But it has a blue filter. Now I'll explain the reason behind the filter and the clear bulb here. Um, this bulb does dual duty. It lights up the pointer. So light from the end of this bulb goes into the end of the pointer and it's uh, used as a light pipe I guess. It goes down and it lights up the pointer in the natural incandescent color. And then there's a blue filter right underneath the lamp that filters the light from this bulb onto the dial scale and lights it up to give it a... It intentionally it's supposed to be blue but it turns out it looks like green because you take the uh, the orange lamp, the orange color of the lamp, and put it through a blue filter, you get green kind of. So that's why it looks green. Same with the uh, same with the meter lamp. It's got a blue filter on it, but by the time you turn it on, it looks green. Here, I'll show you. you see this one here. Kind of looks blue. Looks like the uh, the filter is fading. But both of these lamps are insufficient. They're not bright enough to do the light up the business down below. The owner asked me if I could put LEDs in here, green LEDs, and I agreed. So I'm still tossing up the idea of running with white LEDs with a filter or using green LEDs high brightness. I do have filter material I bought on AliExpress and uh, you can see we have green here and that will work on our bulbs if we use a white LED behind it it should give the right color that's what I'm hoping and if not we'll rip those LEDs out and we'll put in green ones but uh, we've got to make sure the color is looking good on this thing so uh, I'll get busy on that I'm going to replace those transistors first and then I'll start working on the lamps Now I'm kind of confused as to what voltage goes where because uh, looking at this, let's go look at the schematic. Here's a look at the power supply section here and for whatever reason they have three lamps here and from what I can tell there's a transistor in here that's regulating these lamps and controlling the brightness. I don't understand what they're doing with this but they have a 6 volt, 12 volt and 6 volt pilot light power illumination is 6 volt, meter is 6 volt, the dial scale lamp is 12 and then way over here is the stereo lamp and that's a 6 volt at 35 milliamps. So they have a couple different bulbs, 6 volt 35 milliamps for these two, uh, 12 volt 100 milliamps, 6 volt 100 milliamps.
but uh, yeah so we're gonna make sure we don't mix these up I noticed that when you turn the power on the meter lamp flashes bright and then it dims down and it's almost like it's being regulated I'm wondering what the point is behind that are they trying to keep the bulb life long or are they just trying to cut down on the light the way I see it right now the light is so dim it's almost not usable it, it lights up but if you weren't in a dark room you wouldn't know it's lit up it's pretty pretty pathetic so let's uh, go in here and change this turn it up it's nice that Akai put this access panel on the bottom here for the tuner board otherwise you'd have to disconnect the dial string to get it to come out I'm okay with working through a little access it's okay it gives you plenty of room to reach everything on the board three changed out all right I think that one's done uh, the ones right here All right, pull these old ones out. So these ones are a base collector emitter. You see the black legs on them. Base collector emitter and the new ones are emitter collector base. So emitter collector base. So we put it in backwards. If you don't trust me on that, you can uh, put it on a transistor checker and find out. Okay, so this one's mounted that way. Pull it out. There we go. And this one gets mounted backwards as well. Here's the second one. Doesn't want to focus. Black legs. All right, so last one here is here. Emitter collector base, turn it around. All right, I'll give that a little clean and then we'll put the cover on. So I find one of the most difficult things to do on a 
restoration or refurb, you want to call it, is the LED lighting. It's difficult to get it just right. And uh, this, these meters had a single incandescent bulb that poked through this little hole here and it's supposed to light up this whole meter but it was very dim and uh, you could see the light but it was mostly in the center of the two meters and not on the outside so i decided to go with this led strip these are eight LED, uh, white leds in a row and i can i just tacked it in here on this aluminum plate just to uh, just for testing i just tacked it with some hot glue temporary so i can turn it on and you can see the white leds provide great amount of light uh, way more than what we need so we can always turn that down right so here's the meters with the white LEDs right but that's not the color we want we want green so I do have these sheets um, you can buy these on Aliexpress and you can buy different colors red purple blue yellow all the different colors and these are cheap this is uh, I think I paid a few bucks for this um, with free shipping so yes yeah, so they have a green in here as well and I'm thinking about this green and I used a bit of green here what I'm gonna do is just cover these LEDs with a green filter and uh, try it again okay so I cut down a filter that's more suitable size. This stuff has some kind of a coating on it. Multi layer. Can't get my, I don't have any fingernails. There we go. So it's got a clear layer on it. Cellophane. And this is kind of sticky. Well, this is window film, that's why. So I could put this here and it would stick down. Got a little off center. Let's try and see how this looks once we assemble it. red wires in the way. Let me give this a little bit more of a twist. Dress these wires a little better. There we go. This might not be our final product. We might have to make some changes. So I'll shut the lights off. And it'll be hard to tell. It does have a lot of illumination. I can turn it up. Let me turn it up. It's very bright. I've got more than ample brightness. And that's with 23 milliamps through those LEDs. That's way too much. So I can turn this down. Probably right about there. It's going to be about five or four milliamps going through. I don't know if I have enough color though. It seems kind of washed out. The white LEDs are really bright and washing through. So let me try another layer of try another layer of filter on there just to darken it up. Let's try this one. I think with two layers we might be good. It's just temporary. I'm gonna make it look a lot nicer when I'm done. Okay, let's put this back together. I think that is a better look. It's hard to see, but the, uh, the white lettering is lit up pretty nice. 
can increase the increase the current. That's 11 milliamps right now. And that is plenty bright enough. So I think this is the road I'm going to go. Uh, now we have to do something similar for the dial pointer. We have. Uh, I do have a lot more of this strip I can use. I can cut off. Uh, they're all wired in series, right? I have eight LEDs here, but I can uh, go with uh, two or three or four, and uh, we can use these for the dial pointer as well. We really need a fair amount of light to flood down onto the dial scale, so that's what I'm, my main concern is to make sure there's enough light. So I'm going to doctor this up, make it a lot prettier. I'm going to glue these properly down, probably use some double-sided tape on both the LED strip and the filters and then uh, put it all together and assemble it and put it back together. Alright so it's installed I use double sided tape to stick down the LED strip and then right on top of it goes one filter and then I use stuck down another filter. I just use a little hot glue on the edges here just to keep the filters um, in place just in case so they don't want to fall out maybe in time maybe the adhesive lets go or something and they fall back and they'll fall down onto the meter movements. We don't want that. So let's uh, put this together for the final time. And get all these hot glue stringies out of the way. All this dust. Everything's tucked up inside the corner here, so it shouldn't even come close to the meter movements. There we are. I'll get some cello tape to tape this back closed. Oh, I got one stringy in there. I'll have to go back in and dig it out. But you get the idea. All right, so the dial pointer is going to be another challenge because this has got a, it's unique. It's got a black face dial that has white lettering and the purpose of that is to illuminate it with a, la a lamp or a light and have the lettering light up but not the rest of it and it has this one little wimpy little bulb here that sits in this position and uh, what it does is it shines light back onto the pointer you can't see the pointer it's it's in behind this scale it shines light into the pointer and the pointer is like a light pipe and then the light runs down and it runs down to the part you can see and it's very dim and then the other part is they have light shining down on this scale from this lamp but it's through this blue filter and uh, blue filter is falling apart and it's very dim so what we're going to do is we're going to brighten this up and uh, get rid of this incandescent but first thing I want to do is get rid of this dial scale because I think it's in the way so I'm just going to remove, remove this, sorry, I had you zoomed in too close. I'm going to remove this dial scale. It's got to come off for cleaning anyways, it's filthy with dust. Okay. And then on the bottom we have these plastic rivets, expandable rivets. Let me pull these out. out now there we go all right so this scale should just remove and that needs to be cleaned and we got another scale underneath which is marked off from 0 to 10 but this is our dial pointer here this is what we need to uh, illuminate so I think I can pull the dial pointer out this way and that should release it from this metal clip and then the metal clip will slide off the, the back here. Let me try this right now. So make sure I don't break anything. That's the main thing. Oh, here we go. It's actually moving pretty easy.
All right. Here's the pointer with the filter attached. And here's the rest of the unit. Okay, well there it is. It doesn't look pretty, but it works. So I got four LEDs and they're mounted on the underside of this metal plate pointing this way. Uh, so the, uh, the dial pointer goes in front of them, which absorbs a lot of the light. And it also diffuses the light for in front here. And then I put two layers of the green, uh, green film just to darken it up and uh, it show you, I don't know how well it's going to show up. There is a lot of light bleeding through on the top, but you won't see that. The window's here and um, kind of checked with a sheet of paper. You hold it underneath the sheet of paper under here and you can see where all the light is bleeding. And it seems like it's okay. sort of like this you can hold it there and then you can see where the light bleeds through here's a spot here but that's way in but everything else is good and that is with 21 milliamps current through those LEDs which is well within their spec they're not even getting warm yeah they're not even they're not even warm so I'm gonna put this back together and install the meters I have to wire in the two lamps, the ones for the meters and ones for the dial. I have to calculate and figure out what dropping resistor I need to use because it's gonna, I'm gonna put the face plate on and then I'll do my final adjustments on the intensity with the drop, dropping resistors and then I'll get that all to, dialed in at the end. So these two got re replaced with LEDs. These are uh, water clear. This is red for the stereo lamp and this one's amber for the power pilot light. So I glued that one in already. And I'm just gluing them in place because they don't they don't stay in place this rubber. So what I'm just going to use is a drop just a tiny little drop of UV resin on the side. If I can get it to come out. There we go. Ooh, that's way too much. Okay. And we'll just slip it in and cure it. And uh, that'll hold it in. It's not going anywhere. All right, so I still need to wire in these lamps for the dial light and the meters. And I still need to figure out what resistors to use. And uh, I have to decide a point where I'm going to uh, pick off some power too because I'm going to need these meters the LED in these meters is eight LED white LEDs in series and if you calculate each um, LED has a forward voltage drop of three volts let's say times eight that's 24 volts before the string even starts to light up so powering it off the 12 volt supply here isn't going to work we have to uh, tap it off. Well, they actually have a plus and minus 12 volts. So if I tap across both plus and minus, I'll have my 24 volts. I'll just need to calculate a, a dropping resistor that's correct for the amount of light I want. And this one has, for the, uh, for the dial pointer, this one has four LEDs. So that's 12 volts drop. So I can do the same thing there. Okay, hey, seems like I still have a problem here. What I was doing is I was measuring uh, pin 32 and 28. Pin 28 is supposed to be negative 12 volts. Okay, so if I measure pin 28, 12.7. Pin 32 should be plus 12 volts. If I measure it, we got almost 15. That's not correct. Um, we should have 12 volts, not 15, almost 15. Let's see what that, yeah. So I got a schematic here. Uh, comes off the rectifiers, comes into this transistor X804. That's our series pass for the plus 12 volts. Okay. 
and that is controlled by this transistor C815 no that's not it X805 sorry and it's a 1213A which might be problematic we we'll have to check these out okay the collector of 804 okay you got to be careful here because this is all live 120 volts here all this area right here it's all 120 volts so don't be laying, laying your hand down on there like I almost did so I'm going to use my left hand here and come from the other side and I'm going to check the collector of 804 and it should be 26 volts and we got 26 volts okay uh, the emitter, which is the output, should be 12 volts, and we don't have 12. What do we have? 14 point. Let's see if I can get under here. I can't see what I'm doing, so. 14.5. It's dropping, because when I first checked it, it was 15. It must be drifting, too. And the base should be uh, plus 12.5. And we got 15 volts there, which is incorrect. Let's go back to transistor 805. 805 is this one. And this one drives this one, I'm assuming. And that drives it through. Uh, this is the output. I guess there's just a re resistor divide. I thought there would be a zener here. Where is this? This is ground. I thought there would be a zener here. Okay. Collector, we should have 12.5, which we have 15. We already measured that. Emitters at ground potential, so zero. And our base should be at 0.6 volts. So let's see the base here, 0 0.6. There's 0.6. Collector, 15 emitters at ground potential. Hmm, is this transistor bad? It's drifting up when I get my iron and heat this transistor up. Drops. I'm going to see. Let's replace that 2SC1213. Okay, so I found a few things out here. I pulled out X805, this one here, this uh, 2SC 1213, and that's it here. And you can see it's a tachi part. And if you look, it has a little C within a circle, looks like a copyright signal uh, symbol, but it's actually the, uh, the beta gain of this transistor, it's C class. So it should have a beta of 100 to 200. And I put it in my tester, and we'll see what it shows you. It tests fine any other way, like with the with the uh, multimeter diode check. But if you test this, it tests fine, but it comes back with a beta of 30, which is not fine. So I was suspicious of this transistor. I pull out another one, and this one is another 1213, and it's got the C on it for the beta gain of 100 to 200 and we'll put it in and we'll test this one as well you can see that I hope you can see that it's pretty poor screen on this thing and I got 151 for gain so I think this one's damaged I'm replacing it with this one and uh, that should hopefully clear up our problem and this transistor I pulled out this is the series pass 804 Pulled this one out and tested it. It's fine. It's got a gain of about 150 as well. But I do notice this thing. This thing runs hot, so I'm going to add a heatsink. Um, 
little aluminum heat sink just to help dissipate some heat and we'll put that other transistor in and then we'll test this again. I have a feeling this is going to all work after I do these few repairs. So let's just do this right now. No, way too much here. Way too much. Okay. I'm just going to put this one on like so. on here. And big fat fingers don't aren't good for this little work. Let's try this. Yes, I'm mounting it backwards and upside down. Just give it a little extra surface area to torque that down. And clean that, clean up the smudge on this. Just gives extra surface area for it to work. Three standing is nothing in the way. So okay, I'll install these two transistors and we'll test it again. Okay, transistors back in. Let's check it one more time. See what our voltage is on the power supply. I have plugged in. You gotta be careful of the 120 volts here along this area. And I'll turn it on. Okay, negative. Let's see here. So this one should be negative. Oh, let's get this one should be negative 12. And this one should be positive 12. There we go. Much better. Okay. Now, does this thing get hot? It's getting a little warm. But I can barely feel it. It's not like it was before. It was getting really hot before. Yeah. So it'd be good. Okay, so I should have my 24 volts now. Between here and here. Now I can uh, wire in my LEDs. Okay, we're all finished, put back together. Let's see how it looks. And uh, I'm not happy about this. This is a little too bright. I'm gonna turn this down. I have a 330 ohm resistor in series with the LEDs. I'm gonna jack that down to about 390 ohms, I think. I'm gonna turn this down because, I don't know if you can see that. The pointer has good good light volume, but this try it's difficult to get this area to flood with um, green light from above because everything in behind there is painted black, so there's no reflection from anything. So I'm just gonna leave that as alone. I think we have, uh, a good, we should have our stereo lamp working. Give it a kick. Okay. Yeah, so our stereo lamp is working great. I have a feeling this tuner is just going to work good now. It's not going to be uh, messed up with the power supply and getting stereo signals. Okay, so let's have a scan of the band, see how it sounds. And 
lot of interference here. For an exciting story, I learned the different ways to make It's working pretty good now. It's not going in and out of mute like it was before. Stereo indicator is uh, twitchy. It's locking in on noise. So I think I'm going to try. I'm going to try maybe doing alignment. So we're getting a lot of background noise. The 25th at the Edmonton Convention Center. 100.3 The Bear is proud to present you. That's it. Pretty much. Buy tickets early and save at edmontonhomeandgarden.com. On your radio. Yeah. Yeah. Because Hunter Schaefer wore this incredible outfit. Everything's working good on AM. Okay, so let's see what we can do with an alignment. Okay, so for the AM alignment, they ask for a 600 kilohertz signal, uh, modulated 400 hertz tone. As you can see on the left there, and the right is the amplitude minus 80 dBms. So that's the signal I'm feeding into this loop antenna. I'm feeding it into this loop antenna and it's radiating into the bar antenna. So that's where that's going. So here on the tuner we have center of our signal is just a bit off to the left there. You can see it peaks right about here. It's a little bit off 600. So I'm going to put the thing right on 600 and we're going to adjust the oscillator coil. And this one here is the oscillator coil. This is the one that's going to change the oscillator frequency to match the dial scale to the signal generator. So you can see we're tuned to 600 and I'm going to start adjusting. See if we can peek this out and bring it right on station. Here we go. Right there, you can hear it's tuned right there so it wasn't very far out this is just for dial accuracy okay next step next step is they want uh, 1400 kilocycles 1.4 megahertz on the signal generator same amplitude same modulation and we tune the dial to 1400 as well and you can see we are bang on with our with our accuracy. It's not even worth tampering with that adjustment. But there is one adjustment we need to do. 
on uh, trimmer capacitor TC4 and TC2, uh, we need to peek out the one that's the antenna trimmer. So let's go look at those. So here's the tuning capacitor. This is TC1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And did I say TC1 and 2? I meant TC2 and 4. So we need to adjust this one and this one for maximum signal. One of these is going to affect the, uh, the frequency of the oscillator. So we don't want to touch that one. We, we want to touch the one that is going to uh, peak the uh, sensitivity of the input of the AM tuner. So I have to figure out which one is which here and adjust that. Since we got our dial set to 1400, we can just use the, the tuning meter as our reference. Let me get a screwdriver here. Okay, so I'm turning it and we're peeking it out right here. You can see I go tune it off center. There's center right there, and then off center again. So it's going to peek it out, and then we're done. So that's it for AM adjustments. All you're doing is you're setting the dial accuracy. Everything else is fully uh, non-adjustable, the IF and uh, everything else. But uh, so it completes the AM. Let's move on to the FM. All right, so our first adjustment is we need to center this tuning meter to zero. And it's, you can see it's a little bit off to the one side, which tells us it's, it's detuned. So what we're gonna do is we tune this to an area where there's no station. So you just want background static. It doesn't really matter if you do it on the top or bottom of the band, it's all gonna be the same. So let's go to the bottom of the band. And we're going to tune T102. Here's T102. And what we need is we need a tool that will reach down through the top core to turn the bottom core. See, there's two cores in here. I'm, I'm hitting the, uh, the wires in the way. I'm hitting the bottom core. I have to wiggle this a bit, rotate it slightly until it jumps down onto the second core. It doesn't want to cooperate. Wow. There we go. Okay, it's down in the bottom core. So we can go and tune this meter. And rotate the bottom core until we get a zero. Oh, a little too far. Right there. Perfect. And pull the tool out. If it'll let me. No, see it bumped it again. I have to readjust this. It's really... And there is no hole in the bottom of the board to... Uh, there, we'll try this again. Pull it out. There we go. So now they want us to tune it to 98 megahertz. Put it there exactly. And then we're gonna set our signal generator to 98 megahertz as well. And there we are. You can see we're out a little bit. So let's turn this to 98 megahertz. And we want to adjust the top core of transformer T102 so the distortion is minimized to less than 0.4%. So let's turn this up.
and turning it has no effect. Let's try this a little different here. Let's turn up our signal. Okay. So I'm just setting up the meter so we can measure the distortion. And there we are. So we want to minimize that distortion. So let's turn this another way. Back away. Straight well here is the less least amount of distortion is right here. If I feed it a stronger signal, let me try it. There we go. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, let's minimize distortion here. Right about there is the best as it gets, and that is 0.2% THD according to my meter 0.25 0.22 somewhere around there so we're pretty good okay so we finished the discriminator centimeter and distortion adjustment now we're going on to tracking and sensitivity this sets up the dial scale so that it reads the correct frequency uh, connect the signal generator to dummy antenna load uh, 80 we want an 88 megahertz modulation 1 kilohertz deviation 75 kilohertz input of 2 microvolts and then uh, connect up uh, outputs so we can watch the uh, the level set the dial pointer to 88 megahertz and then adjust five coils l104 l103 l102 and l101 and transformer t101 top and bottom cores i have it set up for 88 megahertz and two microvolts output. So that's what we're getting it. Tuning this, you get a really weak signal. You can barely hear it. You can see our pointer is a little bit off the 88 megahertz mark. I'm tuning right about there is our center frequency right there. So we're a little bit out, not very much. But we'll, te we'll tweak that so it uh, comes back. I'm dealing with a very weak signal here. So I'll just go through and tweak all these coils. Let me adjust this to 88. That's the first one. The L104 is your oscillator coil, I'm assuming. So let's adjust that. Right there, I think. It's pretty quiet, I can't hear it. Let's turn it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we're center frequency at 88 megahertz now. Just peeking it out. Okay, let's go to the next coil, which is yellow. And we're looking for maximum signal strength here. And it was already set to the correct spot. So we're going to the next coil, which is blue. We do the same thing. A 
And we're peeking in this one out. That one's done. Last one, which is white. I have to be careful I don't bump the tuning capacitor here. Well, this one can get a lot of gain out of this one. Let's turn down our signal. I barely lost it. Okay, we're going to leave that one alone. Let's go through them all one more time just to make sure we're peaked. That one's good. The blue one. That one was good. We're not getting any gains here. This thing was pretty much tuned right up. Okay, now that we finished the tracking sensitivity for the low frequency side of the band on the 88 megahertz, we retune our equipment to 808 megahertz and we do the same thing except we adjust C114, uh, tuning capacitor 5, tuning capacitor 3, and tuning capacitor 1. So I have a station right at 107.9 which is going to flood this signal. So I'm going to have to pick a frequency that's off. Maybe I'll uh, see if 107 is free. I don't think it is. I think I have a station at each each uh, marker here. So we're going to figure out what frequency I can use. I'm going to adjust this from 108 to uh, probably 107.5, something like that. So we'll, let me give me a second here. Okay, so I'm tuned to 107.5. Let's adjust my signal generator. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's there. It's very quiet. Let's see how far off we are. Actually, we're not too bad. We're pretty close. So we want to peak C114, which is this red one here and it's buried in this circuit and then we have these three here that we need to adjust and peak so let's try this out with this one first i think this is the oscillator trimmer turn up the volume on this a little bit so i can hear it and we'll try and get this centered on the frequency because my dial pointer is set to 107.5 And it wants to lock on the station. I can hear it there, it's just... Okay, I'll have to leave it there. Let's try the other three. Right there, it's very touchy. This one. Okay, and the last one. I'm not making any gains here. Yeah exactly what I thought. Everything's peaked up already and I don't think an alignment's doing anything here. But we do have our dial scale back in and it's accurate now. Okay, next step is setting up the multiplex. So I set it to 98 megahertz and I have a nice strong signal, one millivolt. You can see it on our right, like a thousand hertz tone. 
and uh, I think I need to turn down this to 7.5. Let's do this right now. Okay, here's my modulation. Actually, for right now, I'll just turn the modulation off. There it's. And we're going to connect up a frequency counter. It says in the instructions to connect it up to tab number 29, but that's an error. Um, you connect it up to 29. 29 is like a power wire. So you want to connect it from ground to pin 21 on this board. And you'll see pin 21 has no other wires attached to it. And uh, that's where I cut the frequency counter. And we'll have a spin around here and look at the frequency counter. So we want to adjust for this. We want 19 kilohertz on here. And we adjust R168, which is on the board here somewhere, if I can find it. Uh, R168. There it is. Okay, let's see if we can get 19 kilohertz. You want to get this fairly close because it helps lock in the weak stereo stations. Turn it down, but it's jumping around quite a bit. Turning it down. Right about there somewhere, it's getting close. It is quite twitchy. That's wrong switch, okay. 18.75, it's too low. Let's turn it back up. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. Let's turn off my signal generator and it should oscillate right around that 19 kilohertz which is still doing okay turn on the signal turn on my modulation now if I feed in a 19 kilohertz signal in my audio here we'll be able to hear it lock in So 12, 13, 14, 15, 17. So it starts to lock in right at 18.3 kilohertz. And if I go up in frequency, you can see it's following, it's tracking. And it should go up to about 19.5 or so before it falls out of lock. And six, seven, there. It wants to fall out of lock around 20 kilohertz. Let's go back down. Falls in at 19.7. 18.6. 2, 1. There we go. So it's pretty much balanced right around 19. Let's go back to our 1 kilohertz and it stays. Okay, we're done. All right, so we finished with the alignment. I didn't really make any gains, so I kind of gave up towards the end there. I don't think I was making any difference on it. Actually, it was pretty much peaked up already, so it was just an exercise. So let's go through the band. The muting seems to be working fine too. I didn't adjust anything on the muting. So you have two levels of muting, both one and two. And you can select your level of muting. High blend, mono, AM. Uh -huh. 
Finalement, il restera toujours la culture. It needs a good strong signal to get a noise free. To get a noise free uh, reception, you're going to have a strong signal, right? Is it gonna, the buzzer gonna ring right away? So Royce won on vault nine. One. It is picking up some really weak stations. So when we get to the top end of the band, things really start to hop. Seems it's got a lot of bass. I don't know if that's by design or, or what, but I don't remember tuners having that much bass. And uh, my amplifier doesn't have a loudness button or Nice quiet. When it locks in stereo, it's nice and quiet on the Nice and quiet on the strong stations, the background noises. 780-989-1002. And there it is. Turn it down. Yeah, it's working good now. So this is going back to the owner, and uh, I hope he's pleased with it. A lot of work went into this. Speaking about caps, I didn't find any bad caps in it. I did find some really old tired ones. Um, I think the uh, recapping probably helped in some aspects as far as, uh, you know, within the power supply. Well, we did have a fault in the power supply. And um, I did replace a couple of those transistors that were suspect. So it's all good now and it's ready to be put to work. Alright, take care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.